Hey, welcome to Board Game Casual. As I was putting together my top games of 2023 video, I realized that for all the great games I was able to play this past year, there are still several that I bought sitting unopened on the shelf, which I haven't gotten to play yet. So in this video, we'll pull from my shelf of shame and I'll go through my top 10 unopened board games and expansions that I'm most looking forward to playing in 2024. There's a lot of unopened games on my shelf, so I'll start things with a quick honorable mention. Love Letter. This is a classic game that's really popular, but I've never played it. A friend of mine was actually telling me how Love Letter is his and his group's favorite game of all time. So when I saw it on sale for $8 on Amazon this summer, I finally pulled the trigger on a copy. It looks like a fun, quick little deduction-y hot potato type of card game uh, with a really clever small deck. And more importantly, I just hear Love Letter referenced all the time, so I'm eager to finally give this one a go and see if it still holds up by today's standards. Number 10 on my list of unopened games that I'm excited to play in 2024 is Green Team Wins. This game went on sale for $7 on Black Friday and I bought several copies of this game as gifts for people, little stocking stuffers, and of course kept a couple copies for myself. I really like having some lighter party type games in my collection, particularly if they support a lot of players and simultaneous play. Green Team Wins supports up to six players, and what's awesome is if you want to play with more, you can just buy additional copies of the game. So with my two copies here, I'll be able to play up to 12. In Green Team Wins, you basically flip a card over that has a multiple choice or fill in the blank question. Everyone writes their answers on a dry erase board and reveals them simultaneously. If you answer with the majority, you join the green team and get points. The idea of going between the green team and the orange team when you get an answer wrong, seems like a really clever way to reward streaks and break ties. It seems super light, but it looks like a lot of fun. Number nine on my list is Adventureland. This was a bit of an impulse buy. One day I saw a post in the Hot Deals forum on BGG that Adventureland was on sale for 15 bucks on Amazon, normally a $40 game. I looked it up and it had decent reviews. I watched some videos and it looked fun, so I scooped up a copy. I figured at the least, maybe I'd save it as a gift for someone. Of course, the friend I had in mind to give it to saw it on my shelf and asked about it and then bought his own copy while the sale was still going on. What up, Andrew? But it looks like a fun game. I've since seen that it's a regular on Tom Vassell's top 100 games of all time lists. It looks like it has kind of a grid intersection system like Targi, and my understanding is that on your turn, you can choose to go as far as you want, but you can never go backwards. I'm looking forward to giving this one a try, and for 15 bucks, it's worth it even if we just get one play out of it. Number eight on my list is the Enchanted Forest expansion for Runestones. Runestones is one of my favorite games. I think this game slipped under a lot of people's radar, but it's awesome. It's got deck building, multi-use cards, a really interesting spend versus use system, player tableaus, and powerful feeling upgrades. In terms of pace, it plays at a good clip and it doesn't overstay its welcome. I feel like I should do a whole video on how people are sleeping on runestones. If I had one wish for the base game, it would be for a bigger variety of special powers in the rune upgrades. And that's my main reason for buying the Enchanted Forest forest expansion. More runestones. It also adds an additional sideboard, which looks interesting. Maybe it'll add some additional ways to score and open up other paths to victory. I'm just hoping it doesn't clutter up the game too much. I've, I've played other games with expansions that I've felt make the game too clunky. That said, I'm definitely eager to play more runestones and give the Enchanted Forest expansion a try. 
Number seven on my list is the Hall of Heroes expansion for Raiders of the North Sea. I must have got excited at some point because it looks like I took the shrink wrap off of it. That said, I've never played it. I played Raiders of the North Sea for the first time this past year, and it was in my top 10 new-to-me games of 2023. I've since bought the Hall of Heroes expansion, which I've heard is a must-have. It has an add-on board where you can draft more cards, it opens up new quests, and ways to score victory points. It also introduces mead, which can be spent to increase your strength in battle. I really like games that give you alternate ways to do things, uh, like increasing strength without simply buying more crew. And more holistically, games that allow for different pathways and strategies to victory. I already like Raiders of the North Sea a lot, and I'm thinking this expansion might just put this game over Architects of the West Kingdom for me. My number six is Long Shot the Dice Game. I picked this one up for cheap during the Nerds Day sale. I'm not the biggest fan of roll and write type games, but I'm a big fan of betting and race type games like Ready, Set, Bet and Camel Up. And as I mentioned earlier, I'm always on the lookout for games that play at larger player counts. This one plays up to eight and everyone's playing simultaneously, so it looks like a lot of fun. In this game, you're rolling dice to move the horses, but along the way, you're betting on horses, buying horses, influencing movement, and acquiring and using special abilities. The next time I've got a group over that's five or bigger, I'm definitely giving Longshot the dice game a try. Number five on my unopened games that I'm most looking forward to playing is Wingspan Asia. This is a really interesting sounding game. It's a complete standalone two player game, but it can also be used as an expansion to the standard Wingspan game. I'm mostly interested in it as a two player game. I've heard that the additional mechanics in this one help provide some alternatives to the egg laying strategy, which as much as I love the original game is probably my one criticism. My girlfriend loves Wingspan, so she's really excited to play this one. In fact, I'm sure this would be number one on her list. She wants to play Wingspan at any opportunity, even if it's just the two of us, so I'm really excited to see how this one plays, considering it was designed specifically for two players. Number four is Mille Fiori. This one was an impulse buy during the Nerds Day sale. I scooped it up not knowing much about it other than remembering seeing it on a lot of the best of 2021 lists. And of course being on sale for a really good price. Since then I've watched some detailed reviews and playthroughs of the game and it looks really fun. I think this one seems right up my and my friend's alley. You lay these beautiful transparent colored glass tiles over spaces on the board that give you resources or points and you're trying to chain benefits off of each other or even off of your opponent's tiles. The board looks a bit intimidating, but watching a playthrough, the game actually looks pretty straightforward. So I'm excited to give this one a try, Millie Fiori. Number three on my list is the Valhalla expansion for Champions of Midgard. I am loving Champions of Midgard. It was my number two new to me game of 2023, and Valhalla, I heard, is another must have expansion. Champions of Midgard is all about the dice, AKA the different warriors you can acquire. And this expansion adds 25 dice to the game with new warrior types and skills. What really excites me about this expansion is that it rewards players for taking a risk on combat and it compensates you for the dice you lose. Your warriors essentially go to Valhalla and can be turned into things that continue to give you benefits. I'm already chomping at the bit to play more Champions of Midgard and I'll definitely be giving the Valhalla expansion a try the next time Champions of Midgard hits the table. The number two unopened game of mine that I'm most looking forward to getting on the table in 2024 is Mosaic. 
Mosaic caught my eye in the best of 2022 lists as it was constantly being praised for having such uh, quick, snappy turns and as a civilization game that doesn't take multiple hours to play. I haven't played a lot of Civ games, so I thought it would be a good one to add to the collection. One of my buddies likes Civ games a lot, so I'm really excited to play this one with him as well. Candidly, I'm kind of dreading the rules teach and the setup of this game. It looks heavy. That's probably one of the main reasons it hasn't hit the table yet. It's got several decks of cards to sort through, different types of tiles to sort, and from what I've seen has set up rules like split the deck into two halves, shuffle this one card into the first half, then shuffle these two cards into the second half, and stack the first half of the deck on the second, and those types of things that make the setup look very involved. I have heard, however, that while the initial setup is a bit of a slog, once you get into the game, it's pretty straightforward. So maybe I'm overly worried. For those of you who played it, let me know. Setup and rules teach aside, I really, really want to give this one a try, and that's why it's currently my number two. Okay, my number one is a bit of a cheat because technically I've already opened it and technically I've even bought some metal coins as an upgrade for the cardboard tokens for it. But technically I still have not played it and that game is Flamecraft. This game had a lot of hype around it when it came out in 2022 and I was lucky enough to scoop it up for a good deal during the Nerds Day sale. It looks like a game that will go over well with the friends I play board games with. I think my girlfriend will really like this one. It looks like it'll be easy to learn, which also helps bump it up to the top of the list. Part of me wonders if it might be a little too light or a little too samey feeling between the shops and the upgrades, but man, I'm just really excited to finally give this one a try. Of all the unopened, or unplayed. Games on my shelf, Flamecraft is the one that right now I'm itching to play the most. So there we have it, the top 10 games sitting unopened on my shelf right now that I'm most excited to play in 2024. Now will I actually get to play all of these this year? Only time will tell. There's bound to be new games entering the collection from this year's gifts, sales too good to pass up, and even newer games that catch my eye. There are also always new unopened games that my friends have that they want to get to the table. And of course, some game nights, the vibe is just wanting to play the hits where no one has the patience to sit through a new rules teach and we just want to play something that we're all familiar with. That said, I'm really hoping to get these played soon, even if it's just to see whether I like them or not. Maybe I'll post follow-up videos once I play them, or even a more detailed look at the Shelf of Shame. I've got even more unopened games that didn't make this list. In fact, this might be a good way to hold myself accountable for playing my unopened games. Anyway, hey, if you've played any of these games, let me know what you think down in the comments. I'd love more insight, especially if you think I should bump up the priority of any of these in terms of the, the order that I have them in. I'd also really love to hear what your most excited to play games are in 2024. Maybe there's a few I really need to add to my list. Then again, do I need more? Thanks so much for watching. Thank you for the likes and the subscribes. It's amazing to see the channel growing. It really means a lot to me. I'll see you next time here on Board Game Casual.